Hello folks, I'd like to welcome you guys back to the channel. My name is Eric and I'm a kidney warrior. Today I wanted to do another transplant, another kidney transplant case study where I wanted to explore how it is your first few weeks after transplant. What does that look like? Now it's been in my it's been in my experience that different people experience different things depending on your uh, your medical level, your fitness level, your you know your health level at the time of transplant, perhaps your age, perhaps your lifestyle. I find all that plays into it. And what I wanted to do today is do a little bit of a deep dive in one of the, another one of my Facebook groups. And you know this is an older post, but I think it's relevant because I think it refers to questions that come up time and time again in you know transplant kidney transplant questions that kind of thing and so although i'm recording this video a little late today is you know december 11th 2023 uh, i wanted to do this on this kidney story channel because i wanted to make sure that we're trying to cover all our bases as it relates to kidney transplant and tr transplant questions so i'm going to do a bit of a deep dive so i'm going to move myself to the side here and then I'm going to uh, we're going to look at the question. OK. And so here in my chronic kidney disease support group, someone asked a question. Kidney transplant recipients, what was your first four weeks after surgery like? Now, I'll speak to my own situation. Now, I got my transplant back in November of 2013. That transplant lasted about almost five years until 2018 now when 2018 uh, August September started happening and I started kind of feeling some rejection symptoms and really it kind of snuck up on me whereby kidney my transplanted kidney failed now I've heard prior to that time that uh, transplanted kidneys weren't you know they weren't well, the, the type of kidney I got, which was the cadaver that wasn't, you know, wasn't predicted to last a long time. Now, obviously, that depends on how you treat it. That depends on, you know, a lot of different things. I'll, I'll move this back just for a hot second. It just depends on a lot of different things. Right. So I feel like the way I treated it, I didn't treat it the best. I feel like other environmental factors, other lifestyle factors kind of played into the fact that. I didn't, I wasn't able to hold on to the kidney. Now I have possession of the kidney. It's literally in my body right now. So as of right now, if you're keeping count, I have three dead kidneys in my body right now, but that's kind of the nature of kidney transplant. If the, if the, if the kidney itself doesn't pose an immediate danger to you, then they're not gonna, they're not gonna take it out of your body. And so, yep. Yeah, so the first four weeks after transplant for me was really smooth sailing i had the pleasure of experiencing my kidney quote unquote waking up in the hospital stayed in the hospital about five days and then they released me now what happens after that is that they're going to require you to come up to the hospital mo hospital multiple times a week in order to you know in order to get blood work in order to monitor that kidney because that first you know four to six weeks that first six months is very critical in the health of that in the health of that transplanted kidney they want to make sure you're doing what you have to do they want to make sure they're doing what they have to do in order to make sure that kidney survives in that hostile environment you have to think about a transplanted kidney right right when we're all born we're given you know if we're in health you know good health we're all giving two working kidneys that are that are kind of like coming out of a, a, a manufacturer, right? Car manufacturer or a factory where it's factory parts. You were you you came out of the factory with those parts. So theoretically, those are the parts that you're supposed to have for the rest of your life. You know, you're supposed to have those parts for the rest of your life and due to medical advances medical technology we we have the the luxury of being able to experience a foreign kidney from a foreign body that can somehow survive within our body and so that's a that's a 
an upside and a blessing of living in this day and time, this modern day and time where medical technology and medical advances allow us to, you know, live well and, and get transplants and, and thrive for a very long time. I, I think in my last video, one of my most recent videos, I referenced a lady who had her, her previous transplant for 24 years. You know, and she was going up for a second transplant, which is probably going to last her for the rest of her life. And so that was first. So just going back to those first four weeks, those first four weeks are going to be going up to the hospital. You know, that's why I often emphasize plugging into your team and plugging into your network of people who are going to be able to help facilitate that logistically. Because here's one of the things that your transplant team may not mention up front, but they want you to not drive for the first six weeks, maybe even longer, depending on the, the, the state of your health at the time. So they want you to not drive. They want you to, to kind of take it easy on yourself because they don't want you putting yourself in a predicament where you're going to strain something or, or somehow jeopardize that transplanted kidney. So you have to think about that. In your planning, right? So I often, I often talk about team. I often talk about tools. I often talk about you know techniques, right? Tips and tricks that you're going to use in order to help facilitate whatever your kidney goals are. Well, if your kidney goal is to get a transplant, you're going to need a team, right? Now that team may be one person. That team may be a hundred people, you know, depending on what your network looks like and what you've cultivated over time, and so. Putting that team together, that could be a spouse, a significant other, uh, another kind of caregiver, a friend, a family member, somebody who is going to be plugged into your kidney care. In this particular instance, they're going to be plugged into your transportation. And so, again, you're going to have to go up multiple times a week for those first four weeks, maybe even longer, to get blood work, probably have some lunch and then see you know, talk to the doctor about the blood work after the blood work. So you'll probably be asked to come up there early in the morning, get to the blood lab, give them blood. They're going to have to send that blood off to the lab and have that blood analyzed for certain numbers, for certain parameters, you know, certain markers that they want to look for. And then later in the day, you're going to have an appointment with your, your kidney doctor, your nephrologist, talking about those numbers right and then here is what's going to happen they're going to tell you about some type of changes any type of changes you need to make whether you need to up your dosage on your your uh, immunosuppressants whether you need to up or or lower doses on other medications so that's what you're going to need to do you're going to need to those that's what the first four weeks were like for me i didn't have any real i didn't have a lot of complications we were just trying to find the right dosage the right you know the right med regimen and so I was very lucky in that regard but I've heard that other people experience other things and so let's let me put let's put me to the side for a quick second and then let's talk about that right <clears throat> so let's let's reiterate kidney transplant recipients what was your first four weeks after surgery like well Diana here says let's go down a little bit let me see Diana here says that she wanted to sleep. She said, I wanted to sleep and eat every kind of potato. It was tough emotional adjustment because my anti-rejection meds were not quite right. So they were changed after each blood draw. To be honest, some days I cried and some days I celebrated. Let's, uh, let's see more here. There was little physical pain that my meds easily controlled. But I was surprised how hard it hit me emotionally. Also, remember, you will not be able to drive for a bit and you will need help lifting. Now, I am two years out. I have regular energy levels and a very good quality of life. I wish you the best outcome possible. Think about that. Now, now Diana recorded this. Well, this post is from, you know, as of this recording, this post is from two years ago is from back in 2021 we're in 2023 now going into 2024 and so this post talks about what i just talked about you're going to have to go up for regular blood draws you're not going to be able to drive you're barely going to be able to lift so the importance of a team is going to be so important you know having someone because you be 
you maybe you wouldn't be surprised about how much lifting you do just just trying to live your day-to-day life just think about the 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 chores you do or the the house maintenance stuff you do laundry cooking cleaning all that stuff that you may be responsible for prior to transplant you're also going to be responsible responsible for taking care of after transplant because after transplant cleanliness is going to be a top priority so you're going to want to maintain a clean area clean home going to want to maintain just you know kind of clean surroundings and so the importance of having a team and having a plan having some tips and tricks and techniques and a protocol in place for your cleaning for your laundry for your for your for your eating and dietary needs all that stuff needs to be in the place prior to the transplant that's why it's so important to have that stuff in place and so again she speaks about having diminished energy levels you know talks about you know her meds making her feel a certain type of way because they couldn't they couldn't get the dosage right and i just spoke about that like all that stuff is it the transplant is going to be the beginning of a of a new problem solving adventure it's not going to be like they pop in the new kidney and then you're good to go that's just not how it's going to work and so as we look at this case study and look at this question it's like it's going to vary for everybody diana mentioned that she experienced some pain but but her meds were able to knock that pain out right and so just talking about you know she wasn't able to drive and and now that she's two years out i bet she she's super excited about life going forward she has regular energy level very good quality of life and it's good to see that um good to see and, and as I do my calculation, well, if, if this was posted in, you know, 2021, this question was where the Diana's response saying she was two years out, meaning she probably had her transplant in 2019. So, I you know, I don't know this person and I hope she's doing well and I hope she's, you know, still has her kidney. You know, that'd be that'd be great to hear a great follow up. But again, it's all about, you know, those first four weeks are going to be critical because they want to you know, monitor you. They want to keep close, very close eye on you. And they tell you if anything doesn't feel right, if anything feels abnormal, let us know. Yell it from the rooftops because we want to be, we want to participate or we want to enact our, our intervention protocol as quickly as possible. And so you have to kind of think about that. Don't think about that. Don't be shy when it comes to communicating with your transplant team. Don't be shy about letting them know that something's wrong or something you just don't feel right, right? And so let's go down a little bit more. Let's look at another another couple of responses. Swelling and pain. This is from Chris. So swelling and pain. Walking was almost impossible. Thighs swelled up like crazy. Out of breath. Clothes didn't fit. I was mad as hell because nobody told me this would happen. Wow. Wow. That's See? Total contrast or a big contrast between what Diana just spoke about. She said, hey, things didn't go that well. But this person, Chris, was like, no, my clothes didn't fit. I was swelling. Walking was impossible. Thighs swelled up like crazy. Out of breath. No one told this person this. And, Ed, I, I'll, cut, I'll cut the transplant team some slack here because that may be unique to Chris, right? That may have not been something that the transplant team had experienced before or it may have been a long time or the coordinator or the nephrologist may be new to transplant so all this stuff kind of goes into you know the oh i guess that can happen so you add that you add chris's experience in there to kind of warn the next person right and so again it could a lot of stuff could happen those first four weeks are going to kind of be your 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 body which is used to one set of circumstances getting used to another set of circumstances. And so it's hard to just say, you know, all right, well, this foreign kidney that's foreign to your body is going to is going to behave perfectly because that's just not the case. Now, you want it to be the case, best case scenario, but it's just not the case. Right now, luckily for me, I didn't experience any swelling. I didn't experience any any significant amount of pain. Right. You know, it was just kind of like pain at the surgery site you know and and i had the luxury of having the the occupational and the physical therapist come around and we walked around the hospital floor and 
you know, I was just in really good spirits, you know. So let's do a little bit more deep diving. <clears throat> See who, who else, who else and what, what they experienced. And I'll just do a few of these. Just a few. Just a few, if I can get my... Well... Let's look at Jeff here, right here. Hell, it says hell to the staples and stink came out. So, quick and to the point, like, he didn't like it. You know, he didn't like it till to the to the staples and the stink came out. So, basically, into the to the surgery wound healed up. You know, to that, Jeff says he didn't like it to the, to the, to the stint and the staples came out. So, until the surgery site was all the way healed up, they didn't like it so there's another experience for you right there's another there's another viewpoint point of view you know in those first four weeks and and i would imagine those staples and stents probably were in there more six to eight weeks you know just depending on the severity of the surgery site and so yeah so let's 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 read a little bit more pamela honestly when i first woke up i wondered if i had made the right decision it's all very overwhelming and with COVID all around None of my friends or family could be there with me. My first four weeks were not as bad as as I thought they would be. The worst part of the transplant was the catheter I had to have after surgery. I was so glad when it was finally taken out. The, the incision cuts through nerves. Wow, this is lengthy. So I did not hurt nearly as much as I expected. In fact, I'm still numb in the lower, lower right. Now, I won't read all this, but basically saying they were in pain. They had some complications. They had some things that they didn't like. But it, it, the good outweighs the bad at the end of the day. You know, you have to think about, you know, what, what are you going to get out of this, right? What are you going to get out of this surgery? You know, what are you going to, what are you going to experience? Now, for me, I experienced some time freedom. I experienced that not having to go to dialysis. Now, as of this video right now, I'm back on dialysis because my kidney transplant failed. And that's just kind of the nature of kidney transplants. And so I want you to take from this little bit of a deep dive that preparedness is important. Having a team is important. Being prepared for adversity is important. Having a plan is important. And so you don't want to put those things on the back burner or have those things mean or have those things be insignificant in your mind because you want to be ready for when the time is right. And so just kind of keep that in your mind. And I'm going to wrap the video up here. Again, my name, my name is Eric. Name of the channel, Kidney Story. I appreciate you guys stopping by. I'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.